coming to his conclusions were exactly wrong. So it's it's almost I would rather have people in there who were very humble and didn't think they knew what they were doing because they might not tinker. <laughs> Whereas Ben Bernanke is quite confident that pumping in, you know, doubling the Fed's balance sheet is the right thing to do. Whereas I think it's the exact wrong thing to do. We're here on Star 106. Dr. Robert Murphy, an economist, is our special guest looking at government stimulus as a rule and thinking about whether it makes any sense to do it or not. Well, doctor, obviously, based on his conversation with us this afternoon, says no, it is not a wise idea. Let the market rule. We're coming back right after this. 328-8163-8164-8165. You want to join in? You agree, disagree with Dr. Robert Murphy? You can say so right on the other side of this break. Coming back. This is Jeffrey on Star 106.5 FM. Now back to Jeffrey on Star 106.5 FM. Hi, 30 folks. You're here on Star 106.5. Jeffrey, Dr. Robert Murphy is our special guest. 328-8163-8164-8165. You're welcome to have a chat with Dr. Murphy. And let's talk about government stimulus in the Bahamas. We have had to do our own stimulus of the government, uh, sorry, of this marketplace. And uh, some people say, yes, it might have held back uh, unemployment a little bit, not make it as bad as it may have been or could have been, but we're still pretty much on the uh, you know, the ropes in terms of our economic uh, circumstance here. Dr. Murphy thinks that uh, stimulating the economy by way of government uh, bailing out failing institutions and companies and industries is simply not the way to go. As an economist, what are the important data that you must take a look at and evaluate on a daily basis? I look at things like the the price of gold and yield on uh, government securities out of the United States because my big fear right now is on top of just the sluggish economy coming from all the government uh, interventions is the feds pump so much liquidity into the system that I'm worried that there's going to be large price inflation and so I look to those those things to see you know if the, if the yield on government debt goes way up then maybe investors are thinking the inflation's you know now in the cards or the price of gold would be an early warning indicator if if other investors really start to think the inflation's coming uh, why the price of gold well because the price of gold I think in gives, terms of gives you what indication well if if you were an investor and you were studying certain things and you thought that, okay, this money that Bernanke's pumped into the banks, if you saw that, okay, this is really going to start trickling in in the next few months and that that's going to raise prices, I think everybody, once the price inflation is underway, they would rush to gold. And so if I knew three months beforehand that price inflation was going to be in double digits, I would go in and I would buy gold would be a great thing to have because I think that would shoot up in value. Right. And so, so right now, I look at gold to see, you know, are investors, you know, ahead of the game and are they rushing to gold? The deficit under President Bush doubled. It's going to almost double again under President Obama, 1.8 trillion or something of this nature. Uh, the United States dollar has taken a beating around the world. It's kind of done some recovery in the last couple of months, but it is still not where, and it is not the dominant currency. The world now, even China says that we're not going to depend on the dollar and so forth. Let me speak to you to a couple of things, Dr. Murphy. What does a large deficit like $1.8 trillion, if not addressed in the next two, three, five years, do to your economy and the world's economy? Well, it's unsustainable, and everyone's been saying that. So the the fundamental problem with borrowing and spending to try to prop up the economy is that the, you know the reason the economy is in the situation it is is because there was overinvestment in housing and other sectors, and so what needs to happen is those sectors need to shrink and resources need to get shuffled around to other areas that are more sustainable. So when the government comes in and borrows 1.8 trillion dollars, it's just taking away resources from an economy that's already on its knees. And unless you think the government just happens to spend it in all the right areas, you know, that money is basically going to be squandered. So the, the deficit, you know, by raising the government debt, it's sort of painting itself into a corner. It makes it less able to spend in the future if something comes up. And it makes people more uh, worried about hanging on to government debt. So like you say, China and other central banks, they have huge stockpiles of dollar-denominated assets that they're now getting worried about holding because they're worried that the Fed is basically going to run the printing press to pay for all this. Right. Um, in terms of uh, the dominance of the United States currency, 
Is it really under threat, as some people seem to suggest? I, I think it is. I mean, all I can say for sure is you've seen talk in the last six months, various central banks saying things like, well, maybe we should move to a basket of currencies, or maybe we should introduce gold, or we should have the IMF issue uh, special drawing rights and things like that. They weren't talking like that even a year ago. And so this sort of talk, because the whole point of having a dollar that, or a piece of paper that's you know, not really backed by anything, you need to have confidence in it. And so the whole world monetary system is very fragile, and it rests on public confidence. And so to have central bankers talking like this is very unusual. So I think that means behind the scenes things really are in disarray. I don't know if, if that means next year it's going to happen or if it means 10 years from now, but certainly the, the speculation about moving away from the dollar is something you haven't heard. Let me speak to you about the manufacturing base and the agricultural base of the United States, which seems to be disappearing by every decade. A lot of your manufacturing um, integrity has moved offshore, gone to China, Indochina, Indonesia, and so on. Will the United States ever get it back? I don't think that you're going to see a huge reversal of that trend. A little bit of it is misleading that uh, you have productivity going up, and so it's it's so it's not so much that the ability of the U.S. to produce physical things is going down, as that you have fewer people doing it. It's the same thing with agriculture. We actually produce far more agricultural output now than we did in 1900, even though we have fewer people devoted to that. So, so that's that's part of what's going on. Uh, on the other hand, I, I do think that. We were sort of living in a fairy tale land the last few years where China was sending us TVs and cars and things like that, and we were just selling them claims on our houses in exchange, you know, through mortgage backed securities and these other investments. And that now, certainly, that's, that's not going to continue. People aren't going to keep sending us real things in exchange for claims on assets that aren't very valuable. Mm -hmm. So I think the United States is going to have to go back to producing more things at home. Not because that's the proper thing to do so much, but because the rest of the world is going to realize that what are we getting out of this? Why do we keep sending them stuff that we make? Thomas is always, uh, some Bahamians at least, think that uh, we are compromising ourselves by not developing our agricultural sector or by not developing a little bit of light industries uh, and even finding some ways that we could uh, partner with, uh, you know, an entity out of the United States or wherever. Now, Dr., we import virtually everything that we do in the Bahamas, eat in the Bahamas, wear in the Bahamas, and so on. And the reason that some governments have not thought it wise to go down the road of manufacturing or agriculture is that simply it's too expensive. And it's far cheaper for us to buy the orange and the grapes and the bananas from the United States, far cheaper than for us to produce it ourselves. Do you suggest that in an economy like ours, there should be some mix of industries, even if it isn't bringing that much and adding that much to your GDP, but there should be some mix rather than becoming a wholesale service economy only. It's hard to say. Obviously, if the United States uh, suffers through a severe recession and or if there's some sort of disruption, you you don't want to be totally dependent on importing everything. But on the other hand, I mean, it's like I'm a consultant, I'm an economist. It would be silly if I said to my wife, why don't we start growing our own food in the backyard and why don't we start sewing our own clothes so this way we'll be independent? That, you know, there's there's huge gains from trade to be made and so it is this trade off. And on the other hand, of course, if the economy tanks and we can't get food from the grocery store, we would have wished that we had tomatoes growing in the backyard. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's hard to it's hard to say, but you know, obviously over the long term you're much richer if you specialize in what you're good at and buy things as cheaply as possible, but uh, again, on the other hand, this crisis. So I'm giving the typical economist answer that I'm trying to have it both ways. Yeah. But yeah, there, <laughs> there, there is the trade off. And, and certainly I would say I wouldn't trust government ministers to be able to plan and say, well, let's subsidize this sector or this one because they're not going to know better than people in the marketplace you know, what the right thing to do is. Yeah. Now, we depend, I'm talking about citizens of the world, Bahamas and United States depend on our elected leaders to make the decisions for us. But I see that in Iran, they did not like the elections, so they went into the streets. It has kind of caused those elected officials and, you know, the ruling um, Ayatollah to come forth. And, but it's caused a response. Is there anything that citizens can do to kind of stimulate a decision or persuade governments to think a particular way 